Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet as we're looking around the globe for those thousand best practices, what we call the best of the best, the technology, services, products, and processes that are making a difference as we go through the 21st century. And as we have a century that's going to grow by 9 billion people by 2050, maybe 12 to 13 billion by the end of the century, how are we going to be able to increase the quality of life, increase the quality of life, and not just allow people to exist? And as we know, there's right Right now, maybe three and a half billion of almost half of the adult population around the globe that doesn't even have proper sanitation. And so how do we find that and all the other technologies that are really needed for that? And I have a gentleman sitting right beside me. This is Dr. Brett uh, Strogan. He's the visiting scholar from the University of California, UC Berkeley, and uh, energy innovation analyst. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Millennium Engineering and Integration, MEI company. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you with us, uh, Brett. Tell us a little bit about your work, both as a visiting scholar from the University of California, Berkeley, and then also this energy innovation analyst. I like that title. Tell us <laughs> about like both it. of those and how it fits in the fact of uh, we're here talking about tides and star tides, right. which I'm going to have you define in just another minute sure. or two. Um, so I should start out that I, I was a researcher at UC Berkeley until 2013 at the Energy Bioscience Institute, and the visiting scholar appointment allows me to continue some of the great work I was doing out there uh, with uh, Professor David Zilberman. Um, the main gist of that research is looking at the differences in different in alternative fuels, primarily ethanol compared to gasoline, and what the implications are for the infrastructure, for the engines, for the end user, uh, and looking at what, what the implications are as well for the environment and, and economics. Uh, so looking at the two different fuels and looking at new infrastructure that might be needed to support alternative fuels as they're coming out. Well, looking at this, this is very interesting. You're, you're a visiting scholar at the University of California, Berkeley, yep. so you have this academic foot right. that you have out there. And then also you're in the private sector, so how right. do you balance uh, being at the university and having this uh, private sector work and make those mesh so that it makes sense? to both communities, because you know sometimes they exist in stovepipes, right. and one doesn't really talk to the other all the time. Is that part of your job? Right, I mean, they're, they're, I have to avoid conflict of interest, that kind of uh, issue, but there is some overlap in the, I guess, the, the, the strategy that I'm looking at these different problems with. So with MEI company, I'm primarily looking at uh, drop-in biofuels, so different than ethanol, but still in the biofuels uh, area. So looking at drop-in jet fuels and diesel fuels, which are still very, it's a very nascent industry, still coming online, and looking at what technologies are coming out and how we're going to certify and test engines to use those new fuels. Also looking at new technologies for, for supplying energy to remote bases, so something like uh, small nuclear reactors has come up a lot. That's uh, a so very interesting yeah, topic. I'm sure a, a lot of people, one. all of a sudden, the radar goes on when you start talking about right, these a lot of questions nuclear devices. Answer. Yes. Yep. Yep. Right. At looking at the uh, the tides, what is, does the acronym tides uh, actually stand for? And then I know that it's something, that, and I, I go to these yearly Great. out at National Defense University, which is a very fine university, and uh, really is reaching out way beyond the defense community, right. and civil society, and, and also disaster planning and recovery and all that. But what is the tides, and then how do these field demonstrations at NDU really fit? together as far as the TIDES mission and the goals and objectives. Okay, so TIDES is Transformative Innovation for Development and Emergency Support. Um, so it's really a knowledge sharing network. It was in, initiated out of the National Defense University where the, where the, the demo is hosted. Um, the, the demonstrations themselves out in the field are, you can imagine it being similar to what a, a disaster response situation might be like. It's this open field, very little infrastructure, so uh, technology providers come there with, to show off their new technologies to folks that might not otherwise see them. So solar panels, shelters that you can assemble in, in an hour or two, um, satellite dishes to, to get communication going. So you can have a, a fully functioning little uh, little base there uh, within you know, Well, within you say a base, but also if you look at it as far as civil society, it's really it's a village right. there. And it was interesting. I was out there uh, last year, I guess, the first day they were setting out. And so you had a guy, he drove in, he unloaded everything. This was mm -hmm. for you know potable water. And he what he did, he immediately took his hose and ran all the way down the Potomac River, dropped it in, right. ran back up, turned his machine on, and he started serving water to people. Right. I mean, it was... 
I don't know if it was 30 minutes for the whole thing. It was just amazing. Right, and I think a lot of D.C. locals would be uh, hesitant to, to drink water coming out of the Potomac, but there's technologies out there that can make makes water from that river or any other that's clean, and we want to you know, show, show off those technologies if folks are aware of it. Now, looking at this, you know, the whole thing is, you know, it's water and uh, energy, sanitation, uh, telecommunications, all these things really go to the heart of modern society. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's in the middle of uh, Uganda or uh, El Salvador or downtown Paris, France, is right. that you need a certain base so that people actually do have a quality of life. So looking at these uh, field demonstrations you have there, how does that really fit in so when you show up, how should you approach that? Do you just go vendor to vendor? Or are you looking at it as an integrated system? How does these uh, field demonstrations work the best for people that come and participate? I think it is valuable to see the vendors interact with each other. So you could have uh, the, the solar panel or wind, you know, small unit wind power companies providing power for the other units. Electricity is an easy one. Everyone needs electricity, mm -hmm. even for the, um, you know, for water treatment and stuff like that. Uh, but I'd say a lot of the, the folks coming are looking for some, you know, something in particular. So they might try to focus on the the, the comms uh, technologies yeah, or the or the communications, shelters. right? Right, right. So it's it's all there. It's it's pretty. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's ten infrastructures that Tides focuses on, and there's something for everyone, I mm -hmm. guess you could say. Um, so the vendors also tend to form good relationships with each other just by walking around, seeing what else is out there. Um, and form relationships that they might go into business in, in the future with. Well, the interesting thing I felt like last year is that you had the uh, the computer software, you had the telecommunications, and then you had two or three other technologies that all of a sudden they started networking each other because one of them lost his computer. Mm -hmm. And so he just went next door and said, hey, can you do this? You know, about five or ten minutes, uh, he was back up and running, and he was running off the energy of the guy next door. And, of course, this fellow was down here, you know, passing out water. Right. It's just amazing. Uh, you're really doing the integration there. So looking at, we talked about tides, and then there's also the star tides. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. And then how that really goes to heart of this uh, prototyping, experimentation, and also the fielding aspect of this. In other words, get it there, get it up quick, right. so it's absolutely operating and, you know, reduce the, you know, the pain and misery for the people who really need it. Right. And so so tides is, is the, uh, the effort out of NDU um, that's the, what through the, uh, through which the demo is, is hosted. Star Tides is at the global network, so there's a, a website, Star Tides. So that's really trying to tap into the, the resources and, and the interests and needs uh, in other countries outside of America and really get the interagency and, and international collaboration going. Um, as far as the, the, the rapid prototyping and, and experimentation, I'd say the Tides does support some, some new technologies that are you know, early prototypes. Uh, the ex experimentation side, like you say, there, mm -hmm. there can be unplanned experiments taking place on, on the demo site itself. Uh, just showing, showing users how these, these things work, uh, potential customers, you know, whether it's military or uh, FEMA workers, seeing that it, it, that it you know, maybe tested out or at least taste the water, like you're saying. It's I just thought it was really fantastic. This was all really happening on the fly because the guy's computer went down. You know, people, it was a really hot day, so people were looking for water. There was not enough water out there. All of a sudden, he said, well, try some of mine. And, you know, why not? <laughs> right. you know, it's, that's what you're here for. So uh, it was just really interesting that you can actually go there, you see it, but you actually e experience right. it at the same time. And people think, remember that a lot better. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the whole thing, you know. But uh, you're also involved with this uh, Naval uh, Postgraduate School out of Monterey, California. And so you have a lot of academic <laughs> And military uh, connections here, but something called the Joint Interagency Field Experiments. What is that? And then how does that really relate to the Navy? Because that's, you know, this postgraduate naval school. Right. So I should be clear, I don't have a leadership role in, in the JFX, but uh, I, I find it very interesting. And there's a relationship with, with TIDES. It's um, not all that uh, dissimilar in that they're both um, field sites where new technologies are, are showcased. But the JFX, or JFX as mm -hmm. it's often called, uh, it happens every quarter, so it's a lot more frequent than t the Tides demo in D.C., which is once a year. And the, the uh, GIFX will have a specific theme every quarter, so it might be autonomous systems. One time it might be maritime port defense, another time. And that's, so it's more specified, and they have a call for, for white papers, and, and it's a lot more, uh, and there's more, I guess, focus in, in planning and then carrying out the demonstration where they'll 
do experiments with uh, different systems. So looking at GIFX, I know that this is something that uh, many people don't really realize. The U.S. military in toto really is the largest humanitarian aid organization on the planet, mm -hmm. bar none. And people find that hard to believe, but you think about, you know, tsunami went all over Southeast Asia and, you know, the ships were sailing in there almost, you know, right after it happened. Right. And then they were dropping supplies and, you know, protecting places and things like that. So looking at this uh, postgraduate school in Monterey, uh, you know, affiliated with the Navy, how does how does how do they actually support something like this, both the tides and the star tides? So it really translates to the greater community because you think the military is kind of this insular, mm -hmm. you know, standoffish organization, and it really is the, almost the exact opposite of that. It's very interactive, right. and the, someone, uh, Dr. Lynn Wells, who uh, has you know been with us before, mm -hmm. and uh, he just really wants everybody to have this opportunity to be interact and to learn about the innovation, resiliency, and sustainability, and all that. So how does that all fit? so that everybody can you know, mentally understand this. <laughs> right, so I guess the, the one other point I should mention, you asked about the, the relevance to the Navy of, of this site. So the, the one unique aspect also of the, the Camp Roberts site is that they can have maritime and land uh, uh, exercises going on. So there, there is a maritime element to it as well at times. Um, but the, while the, the, the GIFX focus is largely um, the military combatant command led, there is some overlap in terms of the needs of, of the broader community, the disaster response within um, the United States or, or elsewhere. So uh, GIS uh, tools and, and applications is one good um, kind of uh, lesson that, that is uh, kind of showcases how, how there is relevance between the civil and military partnership and how these technologies from the commercial sector can be used elsewhere. So. Um, you can think in a disaster response situation, you want as much information as possible from a, a, an aerial surveillance perspective. Right. So folks have learned that you can use uh, planes and images that are be kept, being captured for commercial sec, uh, sector use, uh, take that information and highlight where the priorities are. Um, so using both information sources from the military and, and civilian uh, applications cannot end up being very useful for, for both. Fantastic. Well, we just run out of time. Oh. You do, you do a very <laughs> nice job. But anyway, one last question. Looking at tides, star tides, and the uh, GIFX, how do you see them meshing together and actually expanding and growing, say, over the next 5, 10, 15 years? Well, the, the one latest development... You have to be quick. Okay, quick. Uh, through, through the Internet is, is the one uh, way, of course, that we want to expand through the Global in in Innovation Exchange. Um, but I'd say also lever taking advantage of the new technologies that are coming out there, 3D printing, uh, new apps, et cetera. So oh, I tell you, the th 3D printing is just absolutely incredible. This is Dr. Brett uh, Strogan. She is the visiting scholar, University of California, UC Berkeley, and also energy uh, innovation analyst, Millennium Engineering and uh, Integration, MEI. Thank you for being here. And thank you as we look around the globe to create Emerald Planet.